petitions of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. If you have your Bibles, go with me quickly to the book of Mark, the fifth chapter. Mark 5, 25 through 28. And the word of the Lord says, And a certain woman which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind him, and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. If you would do me a favor, just grab somebody by their hand, and look them eyeball to eyeball. I know you you don't want to catch that hand. You don't want to look them in their eye. Folks don't wash their hands no more or brush their teeth. But look at that person and say, neighbor, do something different. This time, look across the room and say, hey, over there, do something different. Hallelujah. For the sake of time, I'll have to cut a couple of corners. But if you pray for me, I think everything will be all right. Physicist Albert Einstein quotes that insanity is doing uh, is the doing of the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If truth be told, some of us even now find ourselves in insane situations. Some of us, we do the very thing that we said we will no longer do. And for some of us, uh, history continues to constantly repeat itself. Uh, this woman in the scripture text has an issue. Her issue was a profuse discharge of blood for 12 years. This issue lasted so long that one issue produced other issues. For we learn in verse 26 that she suffered many things of many physicians. In other words, she was so desperate for help. She was so desperate for change and a way out of her issue that she found herself doing whatever the doctors suggested. Not only that, but we learned she spent all that she had and instead of becoming better, she became worse. I'm sure it's right here where this woman reached her breaking point. Uh, there isn't a doubt in my mind that she was sick and tired of being sick and tired. Uh, she was sick of dealing with this issue, sick of being a social outcast, sick of being ostracized and, and criticized, uh, sick of going from doctor to doctor sick of being broke and sick of di digressing instead of progressing in the same way we should be sick of going through the motions we should be sick of uh, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof we should be sick of having emotional experiences but not true change take place we ought to be sick of dancing and shouting but not having enough power to lay hands on a cat and make it meow I can't hear nobody we should be sick of carrying our issues around May I serve notice to us here tonight uh, that the word issue and the word struggle uh, are nothing but cover up words uh, that minimize the root and uh, of our uh, situation. Uh, uh, we minimize our situation for what it really is. Uh, can I tell you we're living in a day and a time uh, where we rather pacify and entertain demons and devils. Uh, but the saints of old wouldn't allow us to deal with demons and devils. Uh, but they would cast the devil out. Uh, can I tell you we're living in a different day in a time. There was a time when the demon possessed folks would come into church and the saints would stop at nothing until they got delivered. But now we send the demon possessed person out of the church. But the devil is a liar. This woman now after doing all she knows to do. After spending all she had to spend. She heard about Jesus. She got in the press. She got amongst the people. She got amongst the crowd. I can't hear nobody. She wasn't concerned about shaking his hand. She wasn't concerned about speaking to him. But she said, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I know I'd be made whole. Sisters and brothers, what do you do when you have nothing left? You do something different in order to get what you never had. You got to be willing to do what you've never done. I can't hear nobody. This woman in verse 28, she has the audacity and the nerve to serve her issue and eviction notice for she said if I may but touch his clothes I shall behold some of you may ask how in the world 
and she had the power to serve an eviction notice to her issue. Well, one version of the Bible says she thought to herself, in fact, I can just touch the hem of his garment. I shall be whole. My Bible lets me know in Proverbs 23 and 7, for as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. There's another version of the Bible that says she said, she opened up her mouth and confessed, if I can just touch the hem of his clothes, I shall be made whole. And Proverbs 18 and 21 says that life and death are in the power of the tongue. Therefore, it matters not if you speak it or think it. But tonight, I dare you to do both. For I hear the Holy Ghost saying that this is the hour, this is the time to serve our issues and eviction notice. No longer will we cry about it. No longer will we pout about it. It. No longer will we struggle about it. But today is the day I'm kicking my issue to the curve. I can't hear nobody. As I get ready to close, I want to ask one question. What would you do tonight here in Birmingham? If I told you you were one praise away from your breakthrough, what would you do? If I told you you was one praise away from your healing, what would you do? If I told you you were one praise from your deliverance, what would you do if I told you as one praise? Oh God, turn it around. What would you do? Would you just stand there? Or would you give God a praise? Would you just sit there? Or would you open up your mouth and put the devil on the run? I dare somebody to open up your mouth and give God a shout in his place. Come on, give him a shout. Give him a shout. Give him a shout. Come on, give him a shout. Give God a shout in this place.